So what we're going to end up with after this is done is a single control point, which we can use to rotate the body of this uh, machine around and the pistons will basically look at each other um, dynamically so we don't have to animate this part. So now we can set this up from the beginning. So what we're starting with is to select the cylinder, which is basically where the uh, entire arm or the body will rotate around. So we select the cylinder, we uh, shift, we uh, press shift S and choose cursor to select it. And then we insert another empty here, which is a circle or something else. But a circle is a good indicator. That this is something you can grab and rotate. It's a, it's a good indicator for a uh, controller. So ideally, we will parent the uh, objects which form up the body. So we parent these to the circle. So we select them first with the shift select, and then we select the empty less, and then we parent them with control P. So parent object. So when we start rotating the, uh, the um, uh, circle, it will uh, move these objects around. And also we can lock the rotation to the Y. So when we just press R, it will only rotate around the Y axis. Oh, sorry, we lock the X and Z, so only the Y is open to rotation. So now the next step is to make this top part of the uh, hydraulic arm uh, to follow this rotation as well. So we can select the cylinder on top of here as well. And then again, set the cursor to the selected and then we put in another empty up here. This can be a plane axis or something else. And uh, then we want these objects to basically follow the position of this empty. So we select the, the objects which form up this top portion of uh, this um, cylinder or this uh, hydraulic arm or a piston is may maybe a better word. And we parent them to that. So if we start rotating now, it won't follow because we have not parented it yet. So, but it follows this one. So we can now parent the target objects or the empty and we parent it, oops, we parent it to the uh, circle at the bottom. And then when we start rotating, we will see that the object follows it around. We can also and the uh, cylinder here, is, of course, like the bolt. So when you rotate it, you can see that it follows this, but it's not looking down at the uh, endpoint here yet. So we can first, I will set this back to its natural uh, or the zero rotation, and I will apply the uh, object constraints in this menu. So I will go and insert a damp track, and this is basically the constraint which will make it look at the other one. So I will go down here and I will insert another uh, empty. So again, I'll just select the object, cursor selected, and then I will insert this empty again here. And I will scale this up so I can see it. And then I will make this empty at the top, look at the empty at the bottom. So using the constraint, I use the target parameter and I will point it to the empty down here. So the way the damped track works is that it, is that it points the axis of its object um, that you choose here uh, in to look at uh, whatever target you have chosen. So if I you choose the y-axis, for instance, it will point its y direction uh, directly to the target. So in this case, I will have to use the minus z. If I for some reason want to be really strict with this and use these, and I want to specifically use the Z positive Z axis to look directly at it, I can disable it and then I can go in and select the objects. I can, wait, okay, so first I have to move the cursor to the position of the empty and then I will switch the transform pivot point to the 3D cursor. So the objects rotate around a 3D cursor, not the object uh, pivots. I will then select both these objects and I will rotate them in the Y axis. And then it will then, it will then point upwards in the Z axis of the parent. And I can then also just uh, apply the rotation. So it, I don't have any fuzzy rotation parameters here. So now since the objects are pointing naturally in the zero 
uh, rotation upwards in the set direction of the empty object. If I now enable this damp track again, it damp track again, it will point the set positive axis down and then the objects will also be aligned in its axis. But often this is not entirely necessary uh, to do. So when I start rotating the controller again, I can see, oops, now I had to go back into the active element or else it will just rotate around the uh, 3D cursor. So to rotate, you can see that this piston part is now looking down at the empty at the bottom here. So now I need to do the exact same thing for the empty down here. I need this empty to look at the empty up in the upper part. So I will select all these objects that form the bottom part of the piston and I will parent it to the empty. So now these follow that one and then I will again, I will add another object constraint to the track and I will select the empty at the top. And then I had to find the correct axis for it to point in the proper direction. And that is basically the rig. It's pretty simple uh, to make the viewport a bit more uh, easy to filter. I can move these to another uh, collection. So this is the scene collection and then there's a light where I have the light. So I can just create uh, targets, not the best name, but gets the point across. And I'll switch back to the collection view with uh, the number one key. Now I own, I'm only left with uh, the controller here. So now it's fairly easy to rotate this and also animate it in the future. Now I only have to animate one object in the timeline and then the pistons will kind of take care of um, the alignment themselves.